Well, good afternoon, everybody. So a few weeks ago during one of our weekly unplugged live streams, I hinted at the fact that Solar Assistant was going to be bringing a new feature to their platform. And they actually moved that feature into their public beta back on June 25th. So I want to walk through their edition of PV forecasting, as well as a few other little tweaks and changes that they've made as well. So let's take a look. So if we jump on Solar Assistance website, we can see here on June 25th, they added a beta update and they have a note saying that this might not immediately show up for everybody. They're rolling this out in phases. So even if you are in the beta right now, it might take a little bit for you to be added to this. But they added this solar PV forecasting. We'll open up this page here. And there's also a reference to this page in the settings of Solar Assistant. But it kind of gives you the ability to see a prediction of what your solar production is going to be for that day. So they've added a new graph on top, which gives you generated PV, predicted PV, uh, where you're currently at right now, as well as the weather and what the weather is predicted to be for that day. And, and most of that's going to end up being like cloud cover. And then it, they'll give you a, a range of actual generated power versus what the predicted remaining amount is for PV power. And so you'll be able to actually see that. So they see down here, uh, the data comes from openmateo.com API. It's queried from the gateway itself, and they've got a handful of settings. So we'll jump into those right here on my solar assistant. So we can see here, here is the new graph, and it shows you it looks like it was a very active day today for me. We had sun and then partly sunny and then cloudy and then mostly cloudy and then partly cloudy, sunny. And so you can kind of see that here. It'll give you a time frame and then you can see in this little bar across the top, you know, yellow is going to be full sun and then they'll have a, a different shade of yellow for partly cloudy and then mostly cloudy and then storms and rain and you're going to see different colors there as well but it kind of gives you a little breakdown of time so your solid yellow line is going to be what's generated your dash line is what was predicted for the day the red dashed line is the vertical bar which shows you where you're currently at so the weather is going to be your bar across the top and then your cloud cover is your light gray in the graph itself and any one of these, you can click and turn it on or off. If Say you just wanted to see, well, what's the predicted today? You can turn off the other options so you can just see the predicted. You know, and where are we at currently? If I wanted to see, you know, what was just generated today? You can see that here as well. So to configure this new feature, you're going to come to the configuration tab and you're going to come down to the devices section. There's this new rated power field. That's going to be what your solar panels are rated for. So it, they can use that to approximate what your total production is going to end up being. I'm constantly adding and removing different arrays. So right now I only have my one fixed array in here that is always going to be in Solar Assistant, and that's 3,000 watts. In order to make a change here, you do have to disconnect make your numerical change in watts, and then reconnect. But there's some more settings in the advanced area as well. So clicking advanced, we're going to go down to the solar PV section. They do have a help link, which does take you to this page on the Solar Assistant website to give you more details and information. You can set your location by hitting change for me. My initial location, I believe, was pulled off of my public IP address. So you might need to double check the location once this feature is added to your copy of Solar Assistant. You can type in a zip code, uh, city, state, and it will 
pull up that information. It will give you a ballpark latitude and longitude. You can, if you want to, add the latitude and longitude manually. And then you need to go through and add your tilt azimuth, your temperature coefficient, your nominal module operating temperature for your specific range of panels. Now keep in mind that this is only able to be set for one direction. You, so if you've got a, a west-facing array and an east-facing array, you can't set one value for both and have it track both. You really just have to pick the array that probably is going to be producing the most for you. And they give you this little note regarding the temperature coefficient and the nominating module operating temperature. You know, if you have the information, update them. Otherwise, leave them alone. But then the tilt and the azimuth is going to be what angle do you have your panels set to? And then the azimuth is going to be the direction that they are facing. So an app that I use on my iOS device is PV Optimizer. So it can give you, based on this alignment section, you'll set this device on your panels and it will give you your current azimuth for your panels. And then you can see down in the bottom right, it's giving me a current degree. That's the angle that my phone is actually leaning. So it can give you those values that you can then punch into Solar Assistant here. So you'll set those values, come back to the configuration page, devices, and then hit connect. And it will go through and start attempting to calculate the predicted PV for your area. Now, it does record that information to this charts page as well. So if we scroll down to the bottom of the charts page, there's now three new charts. We've got outside temperature, cloud cover, and PV power predicted that are now all being recorded. And so for me, I can look at the last seven days. And so we can see cloud cover that I have had for the last seven days. I could see my PV predicted power for the last seven days. Even the temperature, too hot. <laughs> Way too hot. 27, boy. You know, when it's, you know, 90 some degrees outside, 27 doesn't sound all that bad, does it? <laughs> like everything else on the charts page, the, the tool tips are synced together. So you can take a look at, you know, when your outside temperature is 91 degrees at, you know, 445, my predictive power was 1.2 kilowatts for my current array. So interesting to see. Another change that I noticed was this solar PV section, it used to only show today's production and then the week's production. And now what it shows is today I have produced 9.2 kilowatt hours. And at any one time, my peak production was 4.1 kilowatts of power. One other change that I've noticed in this version, you can see as I'm hovering my, my cursor over this overview section. There's no more tool tip anymore. The values are now displayed underneath the chart as opposed to in a tool tip. It does make it a little bit easier to read. I believe all the charts on this page uh, have that change. Your tool tip might have ended up hiding some of the values that you were trying to look at. And so they've added this to the bottom, which I think is a nice touch. I'm sure at some point in time, they're going to look at making this change as well to all the charts on these subsequent pages. But from what I can tell, those are the changes that have been added to the June 25th beta release for PV prediction. I think it's a nice touch, a nice little add. It wasn't something that I even thought was on their radar. I know that Victron has had this for a little while, and I'm glad to see that uh, Solar Assistant is adding this as well. And I'm sure over time, even as it comes out of beta and more people are testing it and using it, they'll be able to fine tune the algorithm to get you more accurate information. I hope at some point they will add the ability for multiple arrays so that you can have different arrays in different angles and that it would be able to track those different arrays. Because if you've got an inverter like the one behind me, you've got multiple MPPTs. And I know in my area, you really have to put solar panels wherever you can put them. 
So some are facing, you know, east, some are facing west, some are facing south. So being able to adjust those and actually have potential prediction for the different arrays themselves would be another nice add. I've been playing around with this for a little while, and I know a lot of folks have been using Solar Assistant as their main tool to be able to interface directly into their solar environment and see what's going on. So I thought that this might be exciting for you guys to see and add and be able to look at, you know, what, what am I expecting to get today out of my solar production? So hopefully that becomes added to the main release channel at some point soon, and then we can continue to see additional features and updates being added to this system really just giving us more and more control over our solar environments and a real-time look at what's going on. So with that, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all stay safe and definitely stay cool. <laughs> and we'll catch up with you later.